Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the project Media Effects Bay in Reaper. I have a project set up here with a kick, a snare, a synth loop, and a piano. And it sounds like this. And to open up the Project Media Effects Bay, we'll go to the View menu and go down here to the Project Media Effects Bay. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut Control B on the PC or Command B on the Mac. And that opens up this dialog where we can see an overview of our entire project. Now, this first tab over here is the source media, which means the files on a hard drive. And we can audition each one right here, hitting this green button. And we can adjust the level of the auditioning with the volume knob right here. Now, the Source Media tab is different from the Media Items tab, in that the Source Media is the files on our hard drive, and the Media Items are the items in our project. For example, right now we're seeing one Media Item for the piano right here. But if we split it into pieces by each note, it automatically creates more media items over here. But if we go back to the source media, we still just see one piano file. Because there's only one piano audio file in the project. It's just cut up into separate items, which we can see separately in this tab. And we can mute the items from this tab just by selecting them, right-clicking, and choosing to mute them. And that mutes all the kick items we selected. And we could do that from the Source Media tab instead. For example, if we select the piano from here and mute it, it mutes all the piano items because they're all connected to the same audio file. But if we did it from the media items and chose just this one, it just mutes this media item, not all of them. Now you're probably wondering, why would you want to mute the items from here when we could just do it from the arrangement window? But there are times where it's a lot quicker just to do it from here. For example, let's say we're dealing with a very big project. We just want to grab all the pianos in one shot and mute them. We can go to the media items or the source media, go to our filter, type in piano, and then only the items with piano in their name are going to show up. So we can select them all, right click, choose mute, and mute all the piano items in one shot or unmute them the same way. Next, we have the usage. Let's go back to the source media and our files. And we can see over here, we're using 20 instances of our kick and five of our piano and so on. And we can go right to those instances, either by right-clicking over here choose usage and jump to that specific one and it gets selected or we can just right click over here and jump to any file we're using now you're probably wondering how can we use this let's say for example we want to add an effect to just one instance of our piano we can go over here and right click let's choose the third one then type shift e that opens up the effects browser just for that item. So you can add an effect like a compressor. And now this compressor is just on this one item or take. 
and we can adjust it to taste. So it's very useful for jumping around to different instances of our files or even the media items over here. Just find that instance we want to edit or add effects to, and it selects it automatically. And we could also rename our files right here. Rename file. Now you want to be careful with this because this is going to rename the actual audio file on a hard drive. So if another Reaper project is using it, you might not want to change it over here. But if you're sure you know what you're doing, we can change the name of our files on our hard drive from here. Or we can just change it based on the media items. Just right click, rename Active Take. Let's name it New Kick. And now if we zoom in, we can see that all the items are renamed New Kick. Or we could change it back right from here. So now if we go back to the Source Media tab, we could also move or copy our files from here. Just select them, right click, and move our file to a different place on our hard drive, or move it to the Project Media directory, or copy the file anywhere, or to the Project Media directory, if it's not already in there. And we could also retain our files in the project bay. For example, by default, if we right click, our files are going to be removed from the bay if they were removed from the project. So if we remove it from here, they also get removed from here. Or if we double click our track and delete all the audio, it also gets removed from the project bay. But if we don't want that, we can just right click over here and choose Retain. And we can see it's being retained right here. And now if we remove this kick file from the project, either by deleting it over here or removing it from here, it's still gonna stay in the project bay. It gets retained. As you can see in the status, it's still available, even though it's not active. So let's undo that to put it back in our project. Now we could also replace our files either from the source media or the media items. Let's do it from here. Just select that audio file and notice it's still set to be retained. Let's replace it right down here, replace in project. And we could choose any instance or all instances and we could browse for the file right here. Let's replace the kick with kick two. We can see right here, our kick sound has been replaced. Before, it sounded like this. And after, it sounds like this. So just like that, we could replace any sound right from the project bay. But again, notice our old kick was retained, so it shows up as available. So if you want to put it back, we can just choose kick two and right click it, go to replace in project and choose all instances. And instead of choosing browse for file, we could choose the retain file that we kept in the project, which is our first kick. And that puts it back to the original kick. <laughs> Now we can also add folders to our project bay by going over here and right clicking, create new folder, let's name it drums, and then it creates a folder right here. We could put our kick and our snare right into it. And we could open it up and see that these files are in the drums folder. Or we can create it by selecting them first, right clicking, Create a new folder down here. Let's call it Instruments. Now those files are in the Instrument folder. Now the folders are separate in the Source Media versus the Media Items tab. 
although we can create them here as well. Let's put all the piano ones together. Right click, create new folder. Now the piano items are roll in the piano folder. And we could delete them by deleting the folder, but keeping our items in the media items tab or the source media tab. Just delete them and keep the items and those folders are gone. Just a great way of organizing our files or our items in folders. And over here, we have the bays. We could save our bay to use in other projects, save all items as new project bay, or just selected ones. Then we could import it into a different project and load and merge it from here. Now down over here, there's a bunch of buttons that are gonna trigger what we've already gone through so far. As far as usage, to mute and unmute, Rename, replace, and remove. Then over here, we have the actions, which are pretty self explanatory to create a new project, new folders, and so on. Then over here, we have options. And this is also pretty self explanatory, except for this one feature over here mirror selection in bay and project. This is off by default, but it's very useful to turn it on if you use the project bay a lot. So with this on, if we select our media in here, it's gonna select the media in our project as well. So it mirrors both selections, either in the source media, our snare, our synth loop, or the media items, our kick, our piano, our snare and synth loop. Anything we select up here is also going to be selected in our project. And it goes both ways. We could select an item over here, and then it's also selected up here. Select the snare, and it also gets selected up here. And in the source media as well. Select the snare right here, and it gets selected here as well, making it easier to find our files or our media items. But again, this is off by default. So if you want this behavior, just turn it on right here. Now this video is getting a bit long and we've only gone through two tabs in the project media effects bay. So I've cut it up into three videos. In the next video, we'll start with the effects tab. So that's part one of the Project Media Effects Bay in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.